All right, I'm going to show you yet another subtraction method, and this one uses number sense to uh, turn one set of numbers into another set of numbers that are easier to subtract. Remember, good mathematicians are always tearing apart numbers to give themselves easier problems. All right, so I'm starting with 2,203 minus 466. I am going to start right here and I'm gonna add 4 to that 6 and that means I need to add 4 to my 3 as well so how does that change this well my top number after adding 4 becomes 2207 and my bottom number after adding 4 becomes 470 all right still subtraction problem now what I want to do is work with this 7. I'm going to add 3 to the 7. So that means I need to add 3 or 30 to my top number as well. So my top number now becomes 2,237. Okay, the 3 comes from 3 plus 0. And my bottom number, when I add 30 to that bottom number, now becomes 500. All right, when we now I have an easy subtraction problem. 7 minus 0 is 7. 3 minus 0 is 3. Um, if you're uh, stuck on 2 minus 5, you know, one way we can do it, an alternate, alternative method is to say I got to make my 2 12. And when I change the number in the top row, I need to change the number in the bottom row that's just to the left of the value that I've changed. So I'm going to put a 1 there. 12 minus 5 becomes 7. And 2 minus 1 becomes that. There I have 1,737. We're going to do another example. Here we are with example number 2. And remember I want to give myself even tens, even hundreds, even thousands in order to subtract. So I'm starting with the 7. And I'm going to add 3 to the 7 to make the 7 go away. That means I also need to add 3 to my top number. So now I have 3,063. And my bottom number, when I add 3 to the 7, I get 10. That changes my bottom number. I'm going up by 3. So now I have 530. Okay. And it's still a subtraction problem. Now we're going to make this uh, 3 go away. And we have to add 7 to make that go away. So let me rewrite my top number now. And I still have my 3. I'm going to work backwards here. Oops. i got to pick a color that will show up on my screen. We have that 3. Remember, I'm adding 7 to my bottom number. So 6 plus 7 is 13. I need to carry the 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, and I have my 3, 3,133, and my new bottom number when I add 7D to 530 becomes 600. Now I have an easier subtraction problem to do. 3 minus 0 is 3, 3 minus 0 is 3. I'm going to borrow, I'll borrow the standard way, that changes to a 2. 11 minus 6 is 5. Bring down my 2, and my answer is 2,533. We will do one more example. Final example. Again, we're giving ourselves, we're making new numbers to make our subtraction easier. And in the bottom number, we want to first clear out the, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands if need be. So with this one, I'm going to start by getting rid of the 5 by adding 5 to it. So, whatever I do to the bottom number, I need to do to my top number. So I'm going to add 5 to that, and I get 7,018. 5 plus 3 gives me the 8. When I add 5 to 365, I get 370. So this is my subtraction problem now. As long as I change both numbers the same way, I'm good. Um, to change that 7, to get rid of the 7, we are going to add 30 to it. So here's where I'm working now. 
and I'm going to add 30 to both of my numbers. So 7,018 plus 30 more is 7,048. 370 plus 30 more gets me to 400. Okay, now I have a much easier subtraction problem to do. 8 minus 0 is 8. 4 minus 0 is 4. Uh, I can't subtract 4 from 0. So again, showing my uh, alternative borrowing method, I need to make that a 10. And to the left of my 4, I'm going to put a 1. I had to increase that 0 in the top row. So I also increased the number to the left in my bottom row by 1. Okay, 10 minus 4 is 6. 7 minus 1 is 6. And the answer to our problem here is 6,000. 648. Watch this video as many times as it takes to see how this process works.